Hello, beautiful, amazing, fantastic world. And you, wonderful, wonderful individual. Today, I would like to speak about the proper blend between wonder and focus. Like having a certain curiosity you, to you, like when you were a child, but at the same time also have the focus and consciousness and spirit you have when you are an adult. We have both these sides constantly within us throughout our whole life. Of course, we have a tendency to kill off our childlike nature and our more curious and wondrous and the feeling of miracle of life, the feeling of magic in everyday, day-to-day -day living and in general the disposition to be observing and at the same time open and, and setting an atmosphere for joy and creativity. As we say, we are human beings, so we cannot be, you know, fa forest nymphs or fairies or gnomes or anything of, of any of these elemental beings because, well, we don't have, we, we, it would be in detriment to us to go around dancing, playing music like a satyr or flying around in the forest just frolicking, you know? We have also our more focused side, our more serious side. But none of these sides should ever take over. They belong in their proper balance. So, human being lies in the middle. It has both the playful side and the serious side, so any of them might come forward if it is necessary. It is about being flexible enough to change our disposition in the moment when it's necessary. Of course, it's not like you change to a different person. It is more that the mood around your spirit changes a little. You as a spirit is the one that is, in, uh, is moving your hands, is blinking your eyes, is feeling your feelings, is thinking thoughts. Of course, you think thought beings that you put reflect within your own being and emotions also beings and your will beings but it is about what type of being are you following are you following the morally good ones and it is pretty easy to find out if they are are they ignorant are they arrogant are they skeptical are they fearful? Are they any of these that might invoke certain feelings of inadequacies and not being worthy, in a sense? When you are the human being in the middle, you have self-worth. Everyone is equal in God's eyes. Everyone has their uh, area of specialization, area of expertise, and there is nothing wrong with it. We need to cover each other's backs in the first place. And that is also, this also, our interests, our area of life and study and all that we are curious about is remnants of the, uh, of the caste system. Today, we cannot have the caste system because we are so malleable, we are so formable, shapeable throughout our whole life that we might shift from one class to another. In earlier times, we were fine with being put into castes because we belonged there as beings. It took a little longer for us to develop, you see, maybe a whole lifetime to develop from one caste to another. But today, we are going through them all. It is important to go through them all, to know about where is our strengths, where is our weaknesses, and by going through whatever is needing to go through, by experimenting and experiencing, exploring, being a little curious, and that we do mostly 
in our earlier life. That means from youth and until our early to late young adults. After that, we are maturing everything we have gone through. And then a little more experiences are sprinkled in as impulses so that we do not become stagnant, so that we do not crystallize with our old life, so that we cannot see forward. You, you understand what I mean here? It is about always being formable, shapeable. Yes, our body deteriorates over a lifetime, but your spirit and soul strengthens immeasurably. Even though your vessel is not always capable of, well, expressing this, the more you practice, meditate, train, the more you see the separation from the body and the soul spirit. And you do not separate so that your body just boop. No, it is that you see what the difference is between our vessel, our sense perceptible organ that is our body and our spirit and soul, of course. So that when you get older, you fall more from the spiritual body to the soul, uh, from the physical body that deteriorates to the soul spiritual body. So that you have much more. You see, it is not uh, our soul spiritual body is not fully bound up by our physical body, like in earlier uh, earlier times. You see, in earlier times, the initiate. Now listen to this. The initiate had to feel their whole body slowly but surely die with their spirit and soul. Today, when we get older, we separate a little. You see the difference? Because, well, the initiates of old were some hardcore badass, badass people, I'll tell you immediately. And the reason for initiation and the mystery centers keeping these things secret is because they wouldn't want an innocent people to uh, innocent people to lose their innocence by knowing the secrets of the universe that is that was suffering it was a lot of suffering but it was finding that love despite suffering finding consciousness and that expanded mind without suffering they also had to leave their body when they initiated but Today we initiate consciously. We sit to meditate within our being, feeling both our active spirit, our feeling soul, and our physical body, which is more or less the reflective apparatus for our soul and spirit. So when you feel something, our soul feels it and reflects it into our physical. From the astral to the etheric to the physical. So by mastering your ego, by becoming more and more one with your spirit, becoming you, the more you work within the sheaths of these three. We have four, we are a fourfold human being that we can get used to. But we also have three other four. I haven't mentioned it earlier. It is our physical body, this physicality. We have our etheric body which keep this mineral body alive. You see, so when our etheric body disappears, separates from the body, we die. And then we become minerals. But while we have the etheric life formative forces, we do not pass yet. Then we have our astral body, which allows movement, the nervous system, which feels pleasures, pains, shows interest, having dreams. Every animal has this, but they live directly in the astral body. So every impulse, every instinct come directly through them. So they don't have a choice in the matter. And we have the human being, the ego, which is allows us to stand upright, which allows us to speak, which allows us to re reflect, which allows us to be conscious and make choices based on what is most purposeful and serving. Not only for ourselves, but also for everyone involved, if possible. It is all about letting space for any and everyone that might need it. That is what being a healer is. It's allowing space to be creative, to be expressive, 
to feel safe. Not always easy, but it is a practice, it is a choice. And even if the whole none even if no other people did this, you know it is right. So don't go don't go fall for the temptation that since no one else does it, I'm not going to do it either. That is not how we are going to develop and evolve. It is about freedom here. I choose today, tomorrow. I chose yesterday. I choose in two, three days to cultivate, to strengthen, study, and to explore the spiritual world and our inner being in relation to it. But not losing ourselves away from the physical world because the physical world is the spiritual world. It has just condensed and crystallized a little. So every tree mineral you see, they are enchanted spirits and beings that has just, well, that have become our world because they are sleeping in slumber, kind of. We can awaken them by truly tapping into the spiritual behind the physical. So that when we pass through death, we take these beings with us and they are free again. But by seeing everything sense perceptibly, passively, in, with inertia, that means without using your active imagination, feeling and will to truly penetrate through the secrets of nature, the secrets of humanity, the secrets of the cosmos, you will only see the atomic world. You will only see the dead corpse of the universe. But there are far more secrets behind than only the atomic. And we have far more impulses that comes from beyond the physical than we have physical impulses. Remember, the only thing we truly need for necessity are food, a home, and these few things that allows us to survive. Outside of that, we have freedom. Our interests, our morals, our inner thinking, feeling, willing, are to become fully alive, moving. Within that, we have freedom to do. So it is about freeing oneself from whatever is shackling one down to limitations that is unhealthy and stagnating. It is about coming alive again in the balance between the curious and wondrous and the serious and focused. And right here, in the perfect... You find yourself and you find consciousness. And there we hold the scale in balance. For if we let one arm or the other fall, we fall into one of two abysses, one of two extremes. And you see already the reflection of the rudiments of this in masses of people today, sleeping people. But being conscious allows you to have your own, well, you go find out for yourself. You just don't go follow. You're just not a passenger in your own life. You do try to find out. Being curious. Being wondrous about it. All right? And that is a choice you have. So, having, having that courage, the seven, the seven virtues, justice or karma, judgment, or discernment, fortitude, or courage. Oh, prudence, or carefulness. <laughs> uh, I, since I take, since I, since I tell them what they otherwise means, you know, justice slash karma, and then ju judgment slash discernment, fortitude slash courage, and then prudence slash carefulness. And then the highest ones, faith, love, hope. They are the highest virtues that we can truly strive for. And that is faith, love and hope despite anything wanting to make you feel and think differently. Because if you feel and think differently, you allow yourself to. That is the freedom of 
perception and of truly coming into there are both good and there are both uh, there are both beautiful things and both ugly things in this world and we should not exclude any of them it's about seeing the whole picture and feeling it through and through knowing its secrets doing that allows you to have insight and it allows you to maneuver in this world and be careful but at the same time loving and at the same time judge judge for yourself where you are what you do what the world is trying to show you and so on and that is the curiosity needed but also the steadiness the the meticulous and uh, descriptive and detail oriented mind and a way of seeing things but also the creative and the artful the beautiful the artistic and blending them together creates spiritual science it creates the science of of the spirit the human being and curiosity and truly longing for it truly asking for these things truly having the openness to truly strive you will be given answers you will be given insights that allows you to overcome as uh, as uh, Rudolf Steiner calls it this pathological skepticism that one believes in nothing anymore unless your senses see it but your senses is one out of 12 things to perceive one out of 12 and then you have the soul moods and then you have the tones have you any idea how many combinations of the different varieties you can truly explore the world with don't limit yourself find out be curious and know that there are many secrets that science, that materialism cannot even touch upon because they refuse to. But having imagination, inspiration and intuition allows you to directly connect to higher realms so you can become a voice for them as well as for yourself. They truly are here constantly interacting with us. It is all about how willing are you to, well, ennoble, enliven, and purify your inner being so that the right, proper, well, spiritual forces are here to help you. And you know, you know if they are good beings. It is a true, you see, these beings cannot, when you truly are conscious, when you truly know about the beautiful and the ugly, you know if that being is beautiful or ugly. And when I say beautiful or ugly, I mean in deeds, in actions, and in the way they perceive things. What do, you, what do you feel about these two words that is for you to find out? But you know there is ugliness in this world. But oh, so much beauty too. It is about finding the beautiful in the ugly, in a sense. Knowing that when you see an ugly, uh, an ugly deed is kind of beautiful in itself because they show themselves in ugliness. They are honest at least. But if they are hiding and trying to be something else, now that is something, that is a little different. So having the proper balance as a human being is important. But yeah, I think this was everything today. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I had a lot of inspiration. It was amazing. A good Monday. A good Monday. Thank you, beautiful sibling of mine. May you be protected, guided, blessed and loved by Father, Holy Spirit, Christ, Michael, ancient masters of all, ancestors from every incarnation, Seraphim, Cherubim, Thrones, Kiriadites, Dynamis, Exusiae, or spirits of wisdom, spirits of movement and spirits of form and archai archangels and angels all bless protect guide and love you on your amazing beautiful unique path you chose in freedom and may you have faith that what you chose truly is the right way to go if you cultivate and ennoble your moral side too we do have karma we do have flaws we are not flawless we are not infallible so it is important to really to acknowledge that and to know that 
that we have our ugly sides. That is just how it is. But it is about, do you, are you willing to overcome them and to ennoble yourself to become less ugly? That is the freedom. You can choose to just keep on going. So what's the use? What's the purpose? Well, sure. But you won't gain any fruit from that. By cultivating and being curious, that is where the fruits of labor, of inner spiritual labor is. Spiritual dedication to. It is like when you sit still. You are just as movable, just as able to move within your soul spiritual faculties as you are with your hands, as you are with your expressions. Right? But you can sit completely still and master yourself. If you tell yourself it is impossible, you rob yourself of that possibility. Because there is no such thing as impossible in, this, in these proper areas. But it is about what we have been inculcated with, that feeling. But we don't know what we feel it. We truly haven't reflected upon it. It has become easily digestible put in an archive in the back of our minds, so when we disagree with something, we just take someone, something forth, but in the end, we truly do not understand it. With spiritual science, you come to understand the human being and our life, where we're going, where we came from, what happens after death, and you gain a certain security in life. You're willing to live, you're willing to explore, you're not afraid of life. And that is the rebirth that you will experience when you do this work. And you are important. Your work is important. You, as an individual, are important. So stick to love. And I will pray for you and your success. And may, and may, we, and may we maybe meet in the future. Or in a future life. So, thank you so much. <laughs> love you. Goodbye.